Hey, ask me Monday next week if it's a benefit because this field is unbelievable. I think this is as good a field as any of the early season tournaments as I've watched the other teams play. Um, you know, again, I think it's an unbelievable test. You kind of find out where you are. Um, it's kind of a win-win in a lot of ways in that you have a chance to grab some resume wins if you can win some things down there. But if you don't, it's really not the end of the world either. So it's kind of a it's kind of a bonus. All I know is we got our hands full on Thursday. You know, I, I you know, uh, Monmouth is scoring 85 points a game. They won at UCLA. They won at Drexel. They scored 90 at USC. We we got a that's kind of a northeastern type of matchup like we had in the first round of the NCAA tournament on Thursday evening. Hmm. Yep. What could playing really well and having success in one of these early season tournaments do for your team? And last time you went down there yeah. and you got those three and it really took off from there. It's a good comparison. And I think, you know, I've, I've talked to our guys about that. You know, that group were kind of searching. You know, we didn't know who we were. We were lucky to get out of Thanksgiving night in double overtime, I believe it was. But you came out of there early getting some confidence and um, maybe I would compare it a little bit to last year winning the Michigan State game and going, hey, maybe we're pretty good. So, you know, you've got a great – it's a great opportunity. It's a great field. Um, uh, you know, but again, you, you, could, you could look to springboard off of this. There's no question. As the, this, the days have continued with the, the teams losing that yeah. maybe shouldn't lose – it doesn't. I don't. I don't think it gives you like the guys are, are are concerned. But does it allow them to understand to beat teams, Monmouth, Milwaukee, whoever it may be? You got to play really well this time of year. Yeah. Yeah. I think our guys are really smart. I don't think they get into like looking ahead on who they would. I mean, you know, they, they've understood. And when we've talked to them about a Milwaukee's coming in here, and certainly I've men I mentioned Monmouth five minutes after the. Uh, Lowell game, you know, um, and we'll get back to really concentrating on them today. I mean, they, they understand. I'm going to I'm going to compare them to Northeastern, like trying to win a first round game to kind of get started in a tournament. It was a dogfight and we expect a dogfight. And um, but I, I think our group is, you know, they, they don't. They, they're, they're mature enough. They understand. They've And you know what's great? They've watched all the scores come in. So, you know. They, they know if you're not ready, you're going to get beat. Monmouth guard play. Great guards, great perimeter. They're scoring 85 points a game. They've scored 85 at UCLA. They scored 90 at USC. They go into Philadelphia and went on the road on Saturday at Drexel. Um, they are one confident guy. They got a point guard, average, a 5'9 point guard averaging 24 a game. They spread you out. They drive you. They kick. Um, they can. They got three-point shooters. They got some big bodies who ball screen and roll. Um, so I think it's a great challenge for our defense. You know, here's a team that's in a flow offensively. You know, can we keep them from scoring 80? You know, I think it's a. That's the big thing we'll start talking about today. The defensive challenge. You said early on in the. You said in the preseason that your defense was ahead of your offense. Where do you think that is now? You know, I think our O has closed the gap a little bit. I do think our starting group is learning to play together on the offensive end and get more efficient. Um, and, and we're learning how to put them in position in the midst of our motion and adjust our motion. I think we've always done that here. I'm getting a better feel of, you know, where to get Bonzi and Zach so our spacing is good. Um, certainly when we substitute and downshift, as we call it, you know, then we're really pure when we're stretching it with Matt or Matt. Um, and those two guys continue to be very important to us. Um, you know, so I, I think we're, we're still a work in progress there. Um, we've really embraced guarding people. And when, you know, when you have that starting group out there, the length that VJ and Bonzi give you and the chance for deflections, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's something we've really valued and, and it'll, be, it'll really be tested Thursday. What are you hoping to learn from your team this weekend? You know, um, 
how do we play when the lights are bright? You know, we have a lot of guys back from a group that really perform when the lights are bright. But, you know, how, how does this group do it? This is the first time we've got some bright lights on us. And, um, you know, again, I'm Demetrius Jackson, Steve Vestoria, Zach August, and Bonzi Colson. Those guys knew how to dance when it was really high stakes. I'm hoping, you know, they're really ready to do that again. And they help some of the younger guys or the inexperienced guys. They drag them along and kind of tell them, hey, this is what we do when the stakes are higher. In the preseason, the rotation was something you wanted to figure out. Does it look like Ryan and Farrell are kind of... I still like those two guys. And then I think you're... Is it, is, then, then you go, is it Torres or is it Gebbin? Depending on what it calls for, you know, I mean, uh, I think you, you, you're searching there and that could be game to game, night to night, day to day. But I think Matt and Matt are very important for us to go in there uh, because they really spread the floor. They both can shoot the basketball. Matty Farrell helps us handle the ball, takes a little pressure off D and maybe gives him a blow off the ball. So I, I want to continue to develop that. Uh, down there uh, and then it's which which frontline guy are we feeling like we need I know we talk a lot about that story and things people don't notice about him is there one area that you want him to improve on or you want to see him get better at we were better. watching film yesterday and people have shot it well from the three-point line against us which is a concern as you play Monmouth and they're going to spread you out <laughs> Steve Astori is the most reliable defender I don't it's amazing how many guys have hit jumpers in his face. I'm going to actually tease him today before practice. It's like, and he's out there. It's, I don't know if it's like his, his turn to get, you know, Jays in his face. Um, but I, I, and I say that kiddingly, I mean, he's very, you know, he, he's rock solid for us. And, um, you know, he, I have a feeling he'll be, you know, he'll be on that little guard, that small guard that they have. Uh, who's scoring the heck out of the ball at times, along with Demetrius. I thought it was good to see him make some shots the other day. You know, he had not maybe shot it as well. I thought it was great for him to knock down some threes. You said when you get into a format like this, you talk about the routine. <laughs> what is? What are some of the things that involve in that routine yeah. for three and four days? Yeah, no, it's a great question. You know, we, we, we have this tournament routine down um, where, you know, on you know on game day, or of course, let's talk about Wednesday. The great thing is on Wednesday from one to two, we will get an hour on the main court. <laughs> and where have you seen in the NSA tournament, people sometimes use that because it's an open practice. These probably won't be open, but um, People have used that to kind of shoot around and then they go to a private place to practice. I like to play and go live on the main court. ACC tournament, NSA tournament. I want us to get a feel of getting up and down on the floor live where we're going to play. And then when we go at 2 o'clock over to the other gym, we take 30 minutes to walk through or maybe shoot a little bit or talk scouting report. But to use the 60 minutes to play, shoot and play, get a real good feel of the building. That night we'll get into our scouting, you know, we go into our, we, we call it notebooks where they jot down, you know, uh, strengths and weaknesses of the different guys who they'll be guarding. We have usually about a 10 minute highlight video clip of what they do offensively, defensively, tendencies of guys. And, and that's our night before uh, day of the game. You know, you got your, you got a brunch and you got a shoot around. You know, we go over, our routine is to get shots up, to do some five on zero on game day, and to walk through their stuff again. Now, you, you know, hopefully you win, and then you got another one coming quick. You, know, you go back, and what we'd like to do as a staff, meet with the team after the game. And uh, on Thursday night, we would meet with them, give a little bit of a wrap up of what happened, um, and then, you know, get them to bed. We wouldn't really talk about the next opponent. Then the staff gets together that night. We watch some film, talk about it, and then usually get some sleep, not go till 3 a.m. because it's a long weekend, come back in the morning, like maybe at 9 as a staff, really digest the next opponent, and then give it to them in a scouting situation at 11 a.m. and then go to the gym and shoot again and walk through. So that's kind of the routine. I like the off day. You know, you got the Saturday where you can get in and get some practice and and, and uh, get a feel for things. And uh, I'm actually going to take about an hour and a half and go visit my dad. You know, he's uh, I'm going to sneak up. My brother's down there and I, I need to go up and visit him and check him out. But, um, 
you know, it, that's kind of the routine we're in. We we're comfortable with it. It was it was a great rhythm last March, and so we want to kind of you know duplicate it. Is there anything non basketball related that's kind of a staple like mass? We we need to do this. Yeah, our game day mass. We do that. We'll do that Wednesday night. You know, we'll get that in. That's that's kind of our thing. Um, you know, there's really nothing else. Um, you know, you know the great thing about um, these hotels that they have a hot tub. You know, you get your guys down in there. Sometimes, you know, when you're logging minutes and here comes another game. Um, usually, like Thursday night, my guess would be knowing the veteran guys and how they did it in March. We'll wrap it up, have some food for them at nine, ten o'clock, and they'll head to the hot tub for thirty minutes before they go to bed, just to kind of loosen up and 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 stretch out. Um, we don't have Dr. Jerry with us on this trip because he'll be with football, but he usually travels with us and he's been our chiropractor and massage guy. And, um, but you know, those, those are, those are kind of things. And you know, you know what you're doing as you're in the hotel and you got game day that that's a time where I can bump a Demetrius Jackson after a meal and sit down with him and maybe a five minute talk, but it's a talk about leadership or it's a talk about, Hey, if this situation comes up and the assistants, are, are kind of ambassadors kind of interacting with guys and trying to get them ready to play and get them confident and coach them and teach them. Almost fitting that this group can play at night the way you played at <laughs> yeah. night last year. Yeah, good point. We were the night stalkers, weren't we? You know, uh, I hope 6.30 is late enough. I hope it's late enough. But, uh, yeah, we've, uh, yeah we, 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 were, we had the night shift down to a science, and, and uh, you know, I hope we can really practice it again. You mentioned the three-point shooting of your opponents and that Vastori has been in the face a few times. Overall, how have you defended that? Have you closed well? or what uh, You know, I think we've had a couple – we've had some more breakdowns than, than, than I would like, and I think that's an area of concern and, and an area to teach and emphasize and clean up uh, with three days of practice. Um, you know, I, I, I think um, – uh, Milwaukee made some tough ones, you know, deep ones, and, and they shoot it well. But I think that's something we have to be really aware of because, you know, I mean, that's that that line can beat you if you're not good. What if they make if a team makes a lot of threes, you put so much pressure on your offensive efficiency. Now, Tuesday night was a great example that we were efficient up. But I don't always you know, you can't always rely on that, you know, and so I. I want to throw it back to this group to really challenge them defensively for Thursday night. Here's a team scoring in the 80s. They can't score in the 80s. Like, you, you gotta, we got to be better. But I think we've got to do some different footwork stuff, some different breakdown drills. We call it, when you're guarding a three-point sh shooter, a long closeout. If you're going out to a guy who's more of a driver, we use the phrase, it's a short closeout. Our long closeout footwork the next three days they will be dreaming about it when they go home at night. We, we got to get out there more. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mike. Have a great Thanksgiving.